Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, I guess it takes today, and this is actually said, very little to be a hero. Uh, because what I did, I did after we were not allowed to demonstrate uh, more than a week into this genocide, this horrible genocide. And I thought that it's actually impossible that in Germany we have a constitution that allow us to do something like that. It was not possible, if you would have seen the pictures that we saw in Berlin in the streets, there were some streets where it looks like in the West Bank. So people could not even, Palestinian people could not even grieve, they could not be angry, they could not have Palestinian flags in their living room. Policemen came to their living rooms and took these uh, flags. So I thought maybe if I will wear something, you know, in the colors of the Palestinian flag, let them, let them see or uh, let us see what they are going to do with a Jew uh, who they don't like, how she is, uh, what she's saying, uh, how she's saying, how she's dressed. Um, and I was quite naive. Um, so I thank you for this invitation. And I, as I told Yanis, um, we are living in, in times where the politicians, which are actually acting like uh, mafioso, uh, are trying to split us. <laughs> they tried to ban Yanis to come to Germany, and this is a split. So uh, we will come here from Germany and to try to overcome this split. They are trying like Israel is trying to split Palestine. So I can breathe when I see such a map when Palestine is not splitted. And I dedicate now this talk to a colleague of mine, Dr. Nadia Shalhuv Kervokian, a Palestinian who lives in East Jerusalem, who is a professor in the Hebrew University, who gave a talk in a podcast about the splitting of Palestine and the striving for life and how Palestinians are collecting the parts, the geographic uh, splitting and the parts of the bodies of their children in order to bury them as intact, even if they are dead. And she was arrested by the police. She was handcuffed. She was detained by the Israeli police because she's an academic who thinks. This is what we also see in Germany when, for example, students who were protesting in Berlin were beaten brutally by the police. And now, after the presidents of the police, of the free university, called the police who was beating them and dispersed this camp, so, at least that's one of the first resistance that we see now in Germany. Some professors, more than 100, maybe 1,000, signed a letter against these brutal um, deeds of the police. And the Minister of Education and Research said that these professors are Israel haters. They, are, they have to be watched by the, the secret police. This is a campaign that uh, is run by um, the right-wing press in Germany. So we are facing a movement of rise of the right-wing. It didn't start now. It started actually during the corona times when it was not possible also to have demonstrations. If someone said something critical, he was banned from public sphere. Uh, we tried also to protest against uh, the Israeli bombing of Gaza on May 2021, 20, and we were forbidden, and uh, it was very hard. It was the first time that the police was oppressing us uh, in a brutal way against, you know, children, against all ladies, you know, with white hair, protesting for the rights of the Palestinians. And afterwards, with the Ukraine war, 
Germany, that after the unification, wants to be great again. And uh, I don't have to tell you what it means. As Greek people, you know the power of Germany in an economical way. And you know that 1,000 people in, Greek, in Greece died because of the politics of Germany in the European Union. And now Germany is not only trying to be great again in an economical way, also in other political measures, to be in a security council, in the UN, for example, and to set the tone together with the USA. So this is what we also see how a liberal, actually, government, you know, we have the Greens, we have the Social Democrats, and we have the Liberals. They are paving the way for the right-wing parties, doing a right-wing politics against Muslims, against migrants, against people who think differently, and trying, you know, to suppress us in order to, to be in power. This is the only thing that they are interested in. Uh, which is a big change in Germany, because Germany, after the war, the, the first war, the second world war, um, had many taboos. The, polit the, the politics of Germany was gray. You know, they didn't have people who were talking in a polemic way. Um, they were anti-militants. They were anti-nationalist. And today we see how through the identification with Israel and with Ukraine, they try to be big again and great again and win the Russians in their, at least, fantasy and be like Israel, a nation state, an ethnic state, and be a militarist. They are the left in Germany, many people in the left in Germany are so identified with Israel that they are running with Israeli flags. They are calling us anti-Semites more than 30% of the people that are canceled now in Germany, they don't get jobs, they cannot speak publicly, they cannot have exhibitions. Scientists, artists, more than 30% of them are Jews. So Germany now celebrating its memory culture that became a denial culture actually, is telling now Jews that they are anti-Semites. And we know what happens when Germany becomes crazy. <laughs> yeah, this is really, it's frightening. You know, in the beginning, after I was detained, and I was detained three times by the police, two times with the same um, sign, everything is not according to the law, is against the law. This is something that Germany is also doing because Germany has a good constitution. So what they do is to try to bypass the law. And therefore, they make resolutions in the parliament. And these resolutions are against the constitution, but they become soft laws. So the anti-BDS resolution, for example, is actually only the opinion of the members of the parliament. But with this opinion, they can cancel people, and they can do what we call in German Gleichschaltung. That means that you make people think all the same, and, and you narrow the, the discourse and what people are able to say. Now, the second stage, after they try to bypass the law, what they are doing is now acting against the law knowingly, consciously, and deliberately. For example, the ban of Dr. Abu Sita was against the law, and it was now also not standing in court. The ban, of course, against Yanis Varoufakis is not legal to prevent uh, a citizen of the, of the European Union from coming into Germany. This is completely crazy. And of course, they know that it's against the law. But they don't care. And this is what is frightening. And it means also that the European Union is not that important as they try to say that it is. And this is also the way to pave um, the way to right-wing parties, or to do a right-wing politics by other parties who are supposed to do a different politics. So today I'm here in order to overcome this splitting. And I say from here also to the Palestinian people 
who are now suffering this horrible genocide that we are all condemned to see live in public viewing and it is doing something with our unconsciousness. We all know that this is the world in which we are living in, that this is possible and that we can be next. And therefore, we have to stand against it. I stand here with solidarity, first of all, with the people in Palestine who survive this horrible, ongoing Nakba and genocide now. And with solidarity with all the people who are protesting and not, you know, just going on the street like me with a sign, but people that know, young people, that they will be beaten by the police, that they are risking their careers. I think that our heart is with them. They are our hope and we salute them from here. And thank you all. And we need to raise our voices and overcome this splitting and have a better future because we deserve it.